Hello everybody, it's Mrs Lewis here and today I'm going to be reading you the beginning of The Twits by Roald Dahl. Let's see if you enjoy listening to this today. Chapter 1. Hairy Faces What a lot of hairy-faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be a big job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy men wash their faces? Is it only once a week, like us on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hairdryer? Do they rub hair tonic in to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you step out of your door on the street, maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Have a look at these hairy faces. Hmm. I wonder if your dads have a hairy face like that. Mr Twit. Mr Twit was one of those very hairy faced men. The whole of his face except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose were covered in thick black hair. The stuff even sprouted out in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and his ear holes. Mr Twit felt that his hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand, but in truth he was neither of those things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was born a twit and now at the age of 60 he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr Twit wash this bristly nail brushy face of his? The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. There's Mr Twit. Ooh, very hairy. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairies, hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in amongst the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less right again. But the hairy men cannot do that. We can also, if we're careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy men. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving in some of the hairs. Mr Twit did not even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfast and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. There weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve whilst he was eating. But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all other disgusting things that Mr Tweet liked to eat. If you looked closer still, hold your noses everyone. If you peered deep, into the moustachey bristles sticking over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that escaped the wipe of his hand. 
things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Yuck! Because of all of this, Mr Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I am trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out later on. There's Mr Twit. Mr Twit is eating all his food, wiping his hand with the back, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. And then over here, all the things you'd see on his beard, the tin sardine, oh, cheese and cornflakes all around the hairs of his mouth. Yuck! So, that's the beginning of the twits. I might come back another day and read you some more about Mrs Twit. If you've got this book in your house, you might want to go and find it or... Maybe you could draw your own picture of Mr. Twit. See you next time.